Hello students. This is Dr. Ranjini, Assistant Professor in Biotechnology. Welcome to e-learning session in Cellular Metabolism. In previous sessions, we learned about transamination reaction, then deamination reaction along with their mechanism. Now in this session, we learn the mechanism of trans de amination. This trans deamination is also called as deamination of L-glutamic acid. It has to be noted that this glutamic acid is not deaminated by L-amino acid oxidases, but by a specific uh, enzyme L-glutamate dehydrogenase. So this enzyme removes the NH3 group. This mechanism is quite different from deamination. Here in this process, we find the both transamination as well as deamination reaction. So hence it is called trans deamination. So this enzyme has four polypeptide chains, hence it is a tetrameric. And this enzyme has ZN2 plus zinc containing metalloenzyme. And this enzyme is widely distributed in tissues in humans. It is widely distributed in tissues in humans and has a high activity and it is very specific for L-glutamate, L-glutamic acid. It is regulated its activity is regulated by many uh, allosteric modifiers. For example, ATP, GTP, and NADH inhibits the activity of this enzyme. Whereas ADP, adenosine diphosphate, activates the enzyme activity. Trans deamination is deamination of L glutamic acid by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. This is tetrameric and it is widely present in the tissues specific for the glutamate. It is ZN2 plus containing enzyme and its activity is inhibited by ATP, GTP and NADH and its activity will be increased by the ADP. Now we'll see the mechanism of uh, this uh, trans deamination. Here, this enzyme converts this L-glutamate into alpha aminoglutaric acid in the presence of the enzyme. Later, this alpha aminoglutaric acid combined with the molecule of water, combined with the molecule of water and NH3 is removed, NH3 is deaminated. And in turn, this aminoglutaric acid will be utilized for or it will be converted into alpha ketoglutaric acid and NH3 removed will be utilized for the synthesis of the other amino acid by combining with alpha keto acids. Here the enzyme, the L-glutamate dehydrogenase catalyzes the deamination of glutamate to form alpha aminoglutaric acid, which on addition of, addition of uh, molecule of water will be converted into alpha ketoglutarate. It has to be noted that the reaction is reversible. The reaction is reversible and this uh, will maintain the equilibrium. But the quick removal of NH3 the quick removal of NH3 will result in the formation of urea, will result in the formation of urea in urea cycle that you will be learning in next session. And alpha ketoglutarate to TCA cycle. So this alpha ketoglutarate is intermediate of TCA cycle. It enters the Krebs cycle. This NH3 will be utilized for urea cycle. The amino groups of most of amino acids are transferred to alpha ketoglutarate by the transaminases and specific transaminases, like group transaminases and specific transaminases. 
by the process called transamination by the process called transamination so alpha ketoglutarate gets converted into l glutamate as the end product this uh, release of nitrogen as nh3 from uh, glutamate is catalyzed by l glutamate dehydrogenase that is the reaction it is the coupled action of uh, amino acid uh, alpha oxoglutarate transaminase and uh, l glutamate dehydrogenase uh, this might explain the the oxidative deamination of l amino acid as it involves first transamination and coupled with oxidative deamination hence this process is called trans deamination this mechanism seems to be major pathway for uh, removal of nh2 group from uh, l amino acid and it results in the increase in the concentration of uh, uh, ammonia pool so this is how the trans deamination uh, will be uh, done in the tissue and this involves the l glutamate dehydrogenase its activity will be increased by adp and its inhibited by atp molecule so it will be deaminated at the same time there is involvement of uh, the trans aminase next we will move on to the overall pattern of nitrogen removal from amino acid we know till now we have studied transamination reaction then deamination reaction and in this session we learnt trans deamination so in presence of group or specific transaminase alpha amino acid gets converted into keto acid this is transamination next meanwhile this alpha ketoglutarate accepts the nh2 or uh, it will accept the the amino group and it will form the l glutamate in the presence of pyridoxal phosphate as the coenzyme now in the presence of l amino acid oxidases with the coenzyme flavoprotein the l amino acid will remove or they uh, lose their nh2 amino group and they form the nh3 and this l glutamate will not undergo the deamination instead it's a coupled reaction of transamination and deamination that results in the formation of nh3 nh3 will be removed so in the presence of the enzyme l glutamate dehydrogenase so one uh, that is nh3 source is from transamination another is from uh, deamination another source is from trans deamination by glutamate amino acid so you have this nh3 pool so this nh3 pool will be the concentration will be increased even by the non oxidative deamination of other amino acid and even glutaminase enzyme removes the nh2 group from the glutamine by combining with molecule of water and also they increases the concentration of nh3 in the body nh3 in the body so this nh3 will be utilized for the amination of the keto acid to form the respective amino acid at the same time this nh3 will be utilized for the synthesis of glutamine by combining with glutamate by combining with glutamate and in addition excess of nh3 the major part of nh3 will be excreted from the body either in the form of nh3 or urea or uric acid so this ammonia has to be excreted out this will not be stored in the cells or the tissue either it will be excreted as such like nh3 or it will be excreted in the form of urea or it will be excreted in the form of uric acid now why the cell will not store this nh3 as the reserve food in uh, normal uh, man the blood level if you check it the blood level if you check it the concentration of ammonia is 40 to 70 microgram per 100 ml of blood so this is the normal range so 
the 40 to 70 microgram of ammonia should be there in 100 ml of blood. But if the concentration of ammonia increases, that condition is called as hyper, hyper ammonemia. Hyper ammonemia. So this hyper ammonemia is associated with the hepatic failure. It will adverse the functioning of the liver. There are two types of uh, hyperammonemia. One is the acquired, it is usually uh, due to uh, the, the, what the uh, lifestyle we have uh, adopted. Acquired ammonemia will shunts the, the blood around the organ, thereby it reduces the synthesis of uh, urea. And at the same time, it is due to the liver cirrhosis. It is due to liver cirrhosis. So you would have uh, witnessed in uh, the alcoholic condition. The another one is the inherited, the hyperammonemia. So as the name suggests, it is from the genetic defects in the urea cycle enzyme that you will be learning in the next session. So normal level of ammonia is 40 to 70 microgram per 100 ml of the blood. But the concentration of the ammonia when it increases, that condition we call it as hyperammonemia that is associated with hepatic failure or liver function will be lost. So there are two types. One is acquired and another one is inherited. As the name suggests, inherited means it is due to genetic defect in the, the urea cycle and acquired is due to the cirrhosis of liver that we will see in the alcoholic patients. But what will happen if the concentration of ammonia is increased in the body? So the symptoms of increased concentration of ammonia in the body will be like slurring of the speech, blurring of the vision. And in severe cases, um, it results in coma and death. Uh, this uh, resemble the uh, syndrome of hepatic coma. So this ammonia, when the concentration is very high, when the concentration is very high, the increased ammonia concentration enhances the amination of alpha keto glutarate. When the concentration of ammonia is there in the body, the alpha keto glutarate, this keto acid accepts the amino group and will be converted into glutamic acid. And this affects the Krebs cycle. The enhanced amination of alpha ketoglutarate, that is an intermediate of Krebs cycle or TCA cycle, to form glutamate in brain. To form glutamate in brain. So this reduces the mitochondrial pool of alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate concentration in the mitochondria will be affected. And hence, the TCA cycle uh, rate decreases, decreases the rate of Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle for the cellular respiration. Increased uh, NH3 concentration enhances the glutamine formation from glutamate, glutamine formation from glutamate in the brain. Thus, it reduces the uh, level or the concentration of the glutamate in the brain. And this decreases the GABA formation, that is gamma aminobutyric acid formation. This is the inhibitory neurotransmitter production decreases because the, the glutamate concentration is decreased in the brain. Next, the raise in the concentration of glutamine in the brain, the raise in the concentration of uh, glutamine in the brain enhances the, the outflow of glutamine from the, the brain, uh, brain cells. So the brain cells start sending or it will uh, uh, remove the glutamine from the brain cell. And when it is removing the higher concentration of the glutamine, it will be transported through the transporter, which will carry the tryptophan inside the brain cell. So glutamine goes out, tryptophan will come inside the brain cell. 
and hence the tryptophan concentration in the brain cell increases which leads to abnormal increase in the synthesis of very important neurotransmitter that is serotonin so decreased gaba formation and increased synthesis of serotonin takes place inside the brain cell so increased ammonia affects the functioning of the the brain cells at the same time it de decreases the rate of krebs cycle decreases the rate of krebs cycle now we'll see how this uh, the ammonia or the nitrogen removed from the uh, amino acid will be utilized in the synthesis of other amino acid or how it will be converted further so that you will be learning in metabolic fate here the there are three main uh, fate of ammonia so this ammonia will be utilized in the formation of uh, glutamate and glutamine so alpha keto acid uh, combined with ammonia and it will form glutamate further this glutamate will be converted into glutamine and later the another fate could be this the amination of alpha keto acid to their respective alpha amino acid so any alpha keto acid combined with the nh3 will be converted into their respective alpha amino acid so these two are the type of removal of nh3 from the the body majority of the nitrogen that is removed from the the amino acid will be excreted either as urea or as uric acid or ammonia as such nh3 as such so excess of nitrogen so the majority of the nitrogen removed from the amino acid is excreted in the form of urea uric acid or else as the ammonia itself the mechanism of excreting the urea the organism they excrete the nitrogen in the form of urea they are called as ureotelic organism they are called as ureotelic organism example includes mammals including human beings adult amphibians we should uh, pay concentration here adult amphibians excrete urea adult amphibians and bony fishes they excrete excess nitrogen as urea they are called ureotelic organism then if the organism excrete the nitrogen in the form of uric acid in the form of uric acid they are called as uricotelic organism they are called uricotelic organism for example birds they excrete uric acid lizards and snakes they excrete the nitrogen in the form of uric acid or ammonia will be thrown out of the body in the form of uric acid then there are organism where they excrete the nitrogen in the form of nh3 itself ammonia will be excreted as as such nh3 ammonia itself they are called as amnotelic organism they are called amnotelic organism example includes fishes fishes tadpoles of amphibians tadpoles of amphibians so here so you should know the difference here adult amphibians excrete urea adult amphibians excrete urea but the larva or the tadpoles of uh, the amphibians they excrete ammonia as such even protozoans porifers so other organism they excrete ammonia as such they are called as amnotelic organs they are called amnotelic organs so you saw how this ammonia is uh, excreted and how it will be used in the synthesis of other amino acids or in the synthesis of glutamate and glutamine so in this session we learned the the mechanism of transamination and few glimpse of uh, glutamate dehydrogenase and how this ammonia pool is maintained and at the same time we saw the fate of ammonia and how this uh, the ammonia is excreted out of the body i hope you understood this session thank you